friend, O Lord. I'll be a servant of God and a friend to man. The path, friend, O Lord, is for me to keep the money watch, do my honest part, care for my body, keep a level eye, be cautious and obedient, walk softly in a sanctuary, keep a song in my heart, go on God's errands. The love of Christ constrains me. The Advent message to all the world in my generation. Praise the Lord, everyone. Vanessa Sophia. Amen. In front of you, we're the Pathfinders of Arusha International SDA Church, and uh, we're glad to have this opportunity to come and share with you what we've learned throughout the whole year. Uh, so to begin, uh, we've been hearing about Ahadi and Sharia, the Pledge of the Lord, but do we really know what it means? So I invite the French class to come and tell us what it means. Welcome. Thank you. 
So the knot she's about to tie is called the overhand, as he so graciously told us. And basically what the overhand is, is think of it as the act of knots. Most knots start from this one. So from so later when he ties the other knots, you'll see him start with this one. And that's because of its simplicity. You know that this is you go from here, think of this as the foundation. This knot is known as the carrot bend, and this one is in a family of, I think, the three different knots that kind of take on that shape. And this one is basically like when you're trying to put sticks together, and you're trying to bring, like, let's say, I don't know, like you're trying to connect this chair to that table, you use a carrot bend for something like that. Thing. So this one, this is the, this think of this as a sibling of the knot that he just did. So the square is basically the current bed, but a little looser. So if you want, again, let's say a chair table, and like you need it to be a bit loose so you can like open it up later, you would use this knot. So the reason you can use this knot. Yes, as you can see, the knot is a bit looser, so therefore it would be easier to untie. So this one, this knot is a fun one because, well, first things first, obviously, it's used to tie things, and it also, this one is used to tie sheep to like pole. But then one fun thing about this knot, one fun thing about this knot is that one simple pull and it's gone. So before it became commonplace, you know, before we had the internet and anyone could know this, it was used as a magic trick. 
So this is the final knot in that family of three. So, so far we have the carrot, the square, and now we're doing the granny. Okay. So this knot, this knot has a firm little history because in within the slave trade, so within the slave trade, this knot would be the knot that was used to move people from place to place. So this is the kind of knot that would be used to this is the kind of knot that would be used to move <laughs> to move people from place to place. So obviously we are not we are not in this business anymore because you know we are good human beings. So for an animal or something like that, yeah, there you go, there's the granny. And those are the five simple knots that we will show you in our lot of time.
United States of America for the Cambrai. I mean, I've not been mistaken, this is your Tanzania, the man. So, so we, the camp meeting was from, so, so the camp meeting, the money, so, so the Kapuri was from August 5th to August 11th, and we were two out of the 65,000 pathfinders from all over the world that were lucky enough to attend. So basically what we would do there is just, we would spend most of the day just moving around, finding whatever honor we could, then getting the honor and you get a little paper that allows you to later get the honor once you're back at your camp. So I think between the two of us, between the two of us, I think we collected I think, 12. Yeah? So we collected a total of 12 honors there, which we are very grateful. And we are very grateful that we were able to get this opportunity. So, while we were there, there was an honor called Missionary Night, which makes sense because 65,000 people, you need to figure out how they all get there, you know? So we learned about the missionary life, and while we learned about missionary life, we learned about all the different missionaries who were able to go from place to place, you know, spreading the gospel, and who allowed the Seventh-day Adventist denomination you know, to spread. So we just wanted to talk about two of those missionaries that we feel impressive in a way. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'll be talking about Dr. Ronald Reagan and Dr. and he had a degree in mission. So that's one thing that showed us that no matter what profession you do, no matter where you are or who you are, you can always do what you So they were Germans, and they sailed to the port of Canada in the 1900s, and then they tripped up the mountain, tripped up the Paris mountain, and preached the word. And the first church in Tanzania, St. Adventist Church, was in 1903. Then they spread to Mara, Mwanza, and now, how many churches did you Amen? Amen. So she talked about, you know, the gardeners who spread the mission all the way to the Pirate Mountain. So I'm going to be talking about William Henry Millis and his connection to this little camp that I have here. So, Millis, before he became a missionary, he was a licensed physician. He got his medical degree and everything, and he was also a thyroid surgeon. So at some point, the Lord, you know, gave him gave him the mission to go preach the word in Shanghai, which is a city in China. So when he, he went to Shanghai with his wife, but then two weeks later, not two weeks, two years after they went to Shanghai, his wife died, which is depressing. I wanted to say. Anyway, so he didn't let that stop him, and as a result, he was able to continue his mission in Shanghai. Now, one interesting thing about his mission is that while yes, he did preach, the, most of it was spent healing. You know, as I mentioned, he was a thyroid surgeon. It was estimated that he was able to do around 6,000 successful surgeries in his time in China, which is very impressive. So, now, about this character here. You see, William, along with a lot of people who lived in China, including the Dr. Li Yijang, he realized that since the Chinese did not have a stable cow business, they were not, the kids weren't able to get protein, and as a result, they were very malnourished. So, in, so he worked with a lot of doctors, and as a result, they, they came up with the first working prototype for soy milk. And then as a result, once he came back to the United States, he was able to Establish a soybean farm and as a result also spread these soy products throughout the United States and you know after World War II everything that was in the United States became everything that was in the world. So as a result, he is the reason that we were able to get this little canister of soybean power. So that's the lesson I took from that is that not only can a Seventh-day Adventist missionary have impact to you know,